Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Fishing Long Island. In this episode, I am going to talk about what to look for in a mojo setup. We're talking about the rod, the reel, the line, and I'll even show you a rig as well. Uh, very simple setup, so let's go inside. It's a little chilly out here to do it out here. So let's go inside and we'll talk about the rod and reel setup. All right, to start off, I'd like to talk about the reel. This one happens to be the Daiwa. This is the SG57 with the line counter. It's a nice graphite reel. You got the line counter right up there, which I'll talk about. <clears throat> we also have the multicolor braid in here. Okay, there's your model, if you can see it on that. And of course, it also has the level wind up in the front. One of the reasons why this reel is so good, it's very light, which is nice, because you're also using heavy mojo, so anything you could take the weight and put in your favor will help you out. It's a very light reel. So, let's talk about why the line counter is good. For starters, if you're trolling an area and you start getting the fish, let's say at 130 feet out on your line counter, you know that as you catch one, you reel it in, you could set it right back out to that depth, no problem. Put it right back to 130 feet, and there it is, and you're in the exact same spot where you initially had caught a fish. Also, what's nice about it is, is the level wind, which we had showed you in the front of the reel. And now, if you wanted a reel, say you couldn't get your hands on a line counter reel, we talk about the line. This is a J braid, it's a metered braid, and every 33 feet, it's gonna change color. So if you count it out, you get 100 feet, that would basically be three calls of line out, and you're gonna be at your 100 feet. One of the things you also wanna use on these reels is you wanna put the clips and have it that you can hood a safety line. This just happens to have the snaps all through it, but you can see this is just an aftermarket, I believe this is a pen one, and it has the, uh, the safety right there that you can put a safety line on to protect your investment. So that's another key thing that you want. Definitely would like that. And that's your reel. Next, we're gonna go on to the rod. All right, so on to the rod. This rod is a six foot six, and it's the VIP salt water by Daiwa. This is the model 865H, and it's six foot six, as I said, and it's got a line rating of 20 to 50 pound, which is perfect. I like a six foot six rod. You can go with a six, seven would be my max. I really wouldn't want to go over seven foot for a mojo stick, but um, this rod's really good for it. It's a six foot six, it's perfect. It's got all high end uh, components, as you can see. All right, you hype along the foregrip, your rear grip, and you got your butt cap there. All right, this rod is good also. You want something that's gonna be a little soft to absorb some of the pressure of these fish. You know, if they're making an initial run and stuff, you wanna make sure that you're not ripping these mojos out. And with the tip being a little softer, it could help it. I could bend this here without snapping it. Let's see if I can show you. You know, you have a little soft to play in the tip, yet it still has the backbone needed to land fish. And that's basically the rod. As for the line in this reel, I have it filled with, I believe it's either 60 or 65, I'm not exactly sure, J-Braid. And that's a full spool right here. There's no, there's no um, mono or any back and it's straight braid. You don't have to do that. It's quite a lot of line in this reel. It's probably a thousand feet. But uh, if you wanted to, you could also do, you know, mono back in and save a couple dollars and um, then put the, the uh, braid on top. But yeah, I definitely think you want at least, you know, 600, 900 feet of braid in case you get the right one on and he's running line, especially with these threshers now in the area, whacking these, these lures. You never know what you're gonna get. And from there, we have the braid. We have, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to make that clear for you. Anyway, that's an Albright knot. Not sure if that's coming in clear. But we have an Albright knot, and then we can go to either 60 or 80 pound leader. This feels like it's 80, okay? And we have our leader, and then we have it to a nice quality ball bearing snap swivel, as you can see. Definitely it's worth investing in getting the better snap swivels versus the plain standard ones so now with this mojo setup there's basically two ways you can let it out number one you could use the line counter and while letting it out you could drop to the desired depth not desired depth the desired footage out say it's 150 160 120 whatever you want the other way that is a very popular way of letting out mojos is you're going to let it drop until it hits the bottom once it hits the bottom you thumb your spool like this 
let it raise for a couple seconds, release your spool again, and then let that drop and hit the bottom again. Once it hits a second time, you're gonna come on over, lock your reel up, put it back into gear, and that's where you're gonna be set. That's one way of doing it. But again, you're not really sure where you're at, but if you don't have a line counter, that would work. Also with the meter line, you can always know what you're doing without the line counter. You have a general idea. Like I said, every 33 feet, this line is gonna change color. So you can count it out, three colors, 100 feet, lock up your reel, you know you're at. So now I'm gonna talk about the lures itself, the Mojo. This one is a 24, I believe it's a 24-6. I think that's what this one is. And this is the six, and then you have your 24 right here. One of the things you can invest in that's gonna help you out tremendously is these little spools. You could take it, you put the whole entire rig and wind it onto the spool, and it's never gonna get tangled. To when you wanna use it, just start unraveling it, and everything comes out straight, and you're perfect. Again, the knots, if you just throw it into a bag, it's gonna get all knotted up, and then you're spending so much time trying to unknot these rigs. So for a tandem, what I would like to do is I would always put this one out first. So once it's hooked up to your rod, make sure it's definitely hooked up to your rod first. You definitely don't want to lose your rig in the water. So once it's all set, you're on the rod, I would let the long one out first, and that's about 15 feet out. Once that's set from there, I'll drop this. This is 24 ounces, so I'm not going to just throw it in the water. I'm going to drop it down nice and easy. Once I have tension on a rod, I'll put my thumb on a spool and let it out to where it has to go, whatever that desired depth may be. As said in the previous, you could either drop it, let it hit the bottom, thumb it, let it hit the bottom again, or use a line counter. So these are actually really nice mojos too. I believe these are the Rockfish. There's many brands out there. There's the Tony Maja brands. There's the Rockfish brands. There's the, um, uh, what is it, the Magic Tails. There's another brand. A lot of people are making mojos now. I happen to like these. I like the Mylar in them as well. But any, even if you have the custom ones, I could put the Mylar in it for you. Again, definitely invest in these spools. It makes a big, big difference. And also the bags as well. Once you have your setups, you could put them in the bags, such as this one and nothing moves and you can see I got extra bodies in here I got the greens then I think I have the two-tone another good color the white and the chartreuse together is a great one this week I put on either one uh, and you could also mix and match as well and I got other tackle here here's some more mojos and then we have all sorts of leaders and everything in here if I want to do straight with uh, either drails or if I want to do another three-way with a spoon and a mojo I have all the, the rigs right in that as well now, if you wanted to, with this rig, there's no problem with you cutting this off and putting a clip here. And this way, if you want to, you can interchange it. You could have this either be a spoon, a smaller mojo, or the regular mojo it comes with. But there's no problem. We'll put a spoon and a mojo together. It works well. Catches fish. Not a problem at all. And these are basically all the options you have. One of the things you don't want to do is mix your chartreuse bodies with your white bodies. The chartreuse will bleed into your white bodies, and then your white bodies will be all crazy-ass colors. Um, so you definitely don't want no Jerry Garcia stuff going on there, no tie-dye stuff. So keep them separated. Keep your greens away from your whites. Unless you want to do that, then, of course, mix them together. They do bleed, though. The green will bleed into the, the white bodies. You can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you can see there's all green blood into the bag here. I don't know if you can see that from the green bodies the dyes do come out so definitely keep them separate you know actually this bag has two different parts in it so i could actually have greens in the front i don't know if you can see this greens in the front and then whites in the back and you can see here's the one you can see it's actually got a little bled a little bit on it i'm not sure if the camera's picking that up but definitely keep them separate or you could even do like this and put it in a separate bag so just one little quick tip on that that they do bleed With the mojo, sometimes your hooks might pop out, or you, you might get uh, the tail might get bit by a bluefish. It's very easy to change these tails while on the boat. It's not a big deal. What you're gonna do is you're gonna run your hook in first, your, your main one that's connected to the head. Make sure it's lined up. You want everything straight and even. Okay, you don't want it curled up or anything. Everything's gotta be streamlined. So you can see how that is. Next, take your other hook, measure it up, put it on through the other hook right here, the main hook. Here's your stinger hook. And just get a little piece of the body. Grab a piece of the body, as you can see run it through, try to keep, again, everything straight, measure it out, and then slip it over that hook. Sometimes you have to bend the rig like so to get the hook into place and then straighten it out that way. But once you have it in, like I said, it's a very simple thing not to worry about. You don't have to run to a tackle store right away. Uh, definitely carry extra bodies in the bag, especially when those bluefish are around. They will chomp this thing in two seconds. And a lot of times also, if you get a lot of bass, it'll start ripping, this will rip. 
you know, and things get beat up. But for the most part, the bass don't destroy it, it's the bluefish. So definitely keep those extra bodies. And that's basically how you would change it. And you could see, there's a little slice right there, and that goes onto the main hook, which is connected to the head. The big boys, they don't have it, they just have the single hook. One giant single hook they have on there. And that's the 24 ounce with the single. If I was doing Mojo single, I would just use this 24. I love the 24, it's one of my favorite ones to go. I'll deploy two single 24s on each rod. And that works really, really well for our area. Great little lures. With the speed too, I would do anything from two and a half knots all the way up to four knots. These things are still gonna work, but I like that two and a half to three and a half basically is my number where I like to be with the Mojos. All right guys, thank you for watching my video. A quick little video of a rundown of what I like in a mojo rod and reel. Uh, the line count is the, the colored muted line. These are all bonuses for you if you have it. But like I said, you could do with any rod and reel. This is my setup, I love my Diawood gear. But um, you know, any questions you have, you can always leave them in the comments. I answer them really quickly. But other than that, get out there, get those mojos out there. The time is now, these fish are migrating down south. You know, catch them up, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate subscribing. Thank you so much for everything. And guys, get out there and get fishing.